I've had two kids in the last 10 months go to jail, one kid get pregnant. I mean, these are the kids that we're trying to reach. They aren't kids that are in the fold who are doing great and just need a little pat on the back. We're trying to reach kids who are truly lost. It's a crazy world out there, and there's a culture out there that um, doesn't care about you. All they want is your life. 12, 13, 14-year-old student. She was pregnant with her second baby. The kids that I took were actually kids that normally wouldn't go to church. They're kids that, um, I mean, they usually smoke or like drink alcohol. Family has been involved in gangs and he doesn't want to go down that path. Started gangbanging, started hurting people, started trying to fill that void in my heart. I didn't really consider myself being in a gang. It was just, I was with friends. And before I knew it, I was, I was in the gang. What it's like to, to be born into a gang to be told that you don't even have to be jumped in and because your dad and your uncles and your brothers are bulldogs or gang members and um, that's what you are already, you don't have a choice. Kids choose gangs and gang lifestyle because they're looking for family. They're looking for a place to belong. And Youth for Christ gives them a different option. Some of them come from broken homes. Some kids don't have moms, some kids don't have dads, and, and Youth for Christ provides that avenue. Well, I, I had a, a passion to uh, reach out to the young men so that they don't have to go down the road that I did. Um, the, the kids that are now serving in juvenile hall, um, they're overwhelmed by the positive message that Youth for Christ brings to them every day. Our future is absolutely dependent upon us reaching our youth, you know, that they choose good paths instead of um, the negative paths that they've seen modeled before them. In high school, um, I had a, my best friend Mark Johnston. He died due to um, Oxycontin pills. And it, it does something to you when you sit at the pew at your best friend's funeral. And I believe that if we're not intentional with our kids and raising our kids with the right type of uh, values and morals, someone else will. It's good to be a part of that, able to put this here. Because if it wasn't for someone here, it wouldn't have happened. So it's a good feeling. Um, to Hippity, is, that's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm actually ministering to the relatives of people that want to kill me. Unconditional love that um, we've shown towards them. Uh, we don't judge them, we see the best in them, we believe in them, we talk to them, and we listen to them most of all. You're, you're actually going, and of course you work with churches all over the, mm -hmm. all over the, the community, but, right, right. but you're mobilizing people to go to where the kids are. And need to be loved, and a lot of times they're hard to find, in fact a lot of times they push you away. Being on staff is just a wonderful opportunity to be able to serve the children and be able to be in a school-like setting. We have a real rough school and if we can rise some of them above that. Well, we learned how to trust other people, become friends with other people, and it's really nice. Live life with them and help them walk it through and be able to share faith and be able to lead them to Christ and be able to help them develop their relationship with the Lord. It's like more like a family. My friends invited me to Campus Life, um, and that's definitely where I found God. Campus Life is a club just where to go hang, hang out and know, get to know people and even get to know God and it's really amazing. One night at a, a campus life function there was a guest speaker there and he asked us if we wanted to accept Christ into our hearts and I knew that that was my time and I raised my hand and I said that prayer. But uh, after club was done, Sarah emailed the leadership and said, uh, I just wanted you to know that I was touched by what happened at club today, and I accepted Christ today. And uh, Jenna led her friend to Christ after that meeting. 69 of 1,000 females in the San Joaquin Valley are teen parents. Teen mops are mentor women who are mothers who come alongside these girls who need support. I had a girl at my table who's 13 and um, she just had her baby two weeks ago. And so she would ask what I believed and being able to share you know, very simply, Jesus loves you. It's that simple. I can't think of how many times I've just been so depressed where I just like cry myself to sleep. 
and I just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, why didn't I get that? I've had thoughts like, why didn't I just get an abortion? That's how bad it is. That's how hard it is being a teen mom where you question your actions. Well, at first I wasn't going to church at all. Like, I didn't know anything about God or anything. And now I'm like starting to slowly get involved. Even like if I don't have transportation, like one of the mentors will find a way to help us come to church. Um, going to school at Tioga, being able to re relate with them and, and explain to them what the gangs had gotten me, where it had gotten me, and where I was now. And the main reason that I was on campus was because God opened the door. Who in here has ever done something they've been ashamed of? Me. Rachel. I shared that I'm, I'm something I'm very ashamed of. I no longer got to die. I no longer got to live myself depressed. I no longer got to be held down. See, God has forgiven me. If anybody in here would like to know Jesus, if anybody would like to accept him in their heart, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. Those of you that got this card, I want you to flip it over. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do in my life. Letitia accepted Christ as a result of coming to Teen Mops, and she's deepened her relationship with God. Well, since I've come here, I've gotten more involved in church. Their intention is not just to run a program. Their intention is to really uh, invest inside individuals. My relationship with the Lord now is a close one. I'm tr really trying to live what God has for me, like His will, not my, not my will. Brother John came in and preached, and that's when I first met him. You know, I enjoyed it, you know, his, his preaching and there's a lot of things he's had that he said that I could relate to. So uh, they open up and they relate to me and, uh, you know, I just speak into them. As they open up, I pour into them. Ever since, you know, I want to be a part of what he's doing, you know, and just pretty much be on the righteous path, you know, to God. With Christ in five years, I see myself doing great things, like, just like John, you know. It's, I don't know if I could see myself five years down the road without Christ.